time has finally come to talk about that huge Legend of Zelda sort of kind of sequel game everybody's talking about right now. Link Between Worlds. Yeah, the newest 2D Zelda game that's not a direct remake. It's sort of kind of. Feels good to be relevant every once in a while. And they say I'm out of touch. Check it out! Link Between Worlds is heavily inspired by Link to the Past. For better or worse. What do you mean? That's your favorite Zelda game, right? Yes, but... We'll get there. This game had a rocky development cycle. First it was supposed to be a Spirit Track sequel, but with yet another new gimmick about becoming a moving painting. And then the project became a victim of dizzying mismanagement, with most of the original development team being assigned to other projects like Skyward Sword. As if that did that game any favors. Just watch the review, shameless plug. And finally, Miyamoto decides that the new team should now base the game off of Link to the Past, without cutting any of the conflicting concepts from the original prototype. I'd like to think he meant base the game off what worked well in Link to the Past and not literally just take Link to the Past map and slap it onto this one. Yeah, I've got serious problems with this game. Great, yet another popular game that everybody in the world seems to like other than you. This is unironically one of the worst Zelda games ever made. Holy, what about the CDI games? <laughs> Those games are hysterical. This one's an even worse kind of bad. Mediocre. Oh boy, okay, honestly, if you've never played Link to the Past before, you'll probably really like Link Between Worlds. Yeah, you won't even realize how often it drops a load on Link to the Past and treats it like its own toilet paper. Yes, it reuses Link to the Past's map, like verbatim. And sure, this is annoying, but at least there's new stuff hidden all over Hyrule, like tons of those little shell thingies from Link's Awakening. The problem is you can't just recycle old content and expect it to work with new puzzles and gimmicks. The game is constantly at odds with trying to faithfully rip off, recreate Link to the Past, while at the same time integrating new puzzles and painting gimmicks. So the painting gimmick he hates so much is called wall merging. Hey, I don't hate it, I'm just arguing that it has no place being forcefully shoved in a Link to the Past. Wall merging is a new magic ability allowing Link to cling to walls on other flat surfaces and move along them like a two-dimensional painting. And it's actually pretty cool. You get to solve a bunch of new clever puzzles where you need to slip through cracks and around otherwise impossible obstacles this way. Problem comes with it being mandatory all over the map and throughout many of the dungeons throughout the game to the extent that it gets tiring how much much Nintendo wants to milk this gimmick for all it's worth, and all on the Link to the Past map for absolutely no reason. Yeah, I think you mentioned that already. Either remake a game or don't! It's funny how you're so mad at this game already and we haven't even gotten to the actual controversial feature. Yeah, the Link to the Past disrespect around every turn is one thing, but the item renting system has to be the most catastrophically moronic idea ever conceived for a Zelda game. So anyway, the item renting system... I HATE THIS! You've gotta let me describe it first. <clears throat> so you can pay rupees to rent, basically, any item or upgrade you'd imagine to be in the game at the get-go from this greedy little rabbit man, Ravio. If Link dies at any point after renting an item, it'll be automatically returned to the shop, forcing him to backtrack and repurchase it. You can, however, buy the items outright, but it'll cost you quite a lot more rupees to do so. <clears throat> I hate this. <sighs> at least you waited. There are so many things wrong with this system, I don't even know where to begin. How about I give you a hand because honestly, I don't like it much either. It's like they took all the pieces of the game and then just like threw it in one place and said, here, you pick it up. So you're me that the developers honestly intended for players to grind rupees to gather their equipment instead of, you know, play the game to earn them? It sure sucks taking away the joy of discovering new tools and items in dungeons, caves, and other hideaways across the map from the player with absolutely no discernible upside. Like, what do we gain from losing our items upon death? How about the fact that we just absolutely destroyed Link to the Past by completely removing its Metroidvania item discovery system? Just imagine if Nintendo released a Super Metroid remake today, and Samus now starts with all of her upgrades at once in the ship, but first she's gotta shoot hundreds of screens and zoomers in order to buy back all of her crap first. They not only robbed us of the fun of the game, but they just totally sabotaged the entire deliberate structure of the game's design in the process. It also doesn't help that this is probably the easiest Zelda game I have ever played. The designers were clearly worried about players dying and losing all their items and rupees spent to acquire them, so the whole game has more cash packed in it than Luigi's Mansion to compensate. By the time I beat the game, I had acquired over 15,000 rupees, but the game hadn't even killed me once, defeating the entire point of the rental system. And then it had the audacity to showcase my empty death count in a five-digit text box, as if it were proudly Dark Souls or Super Meat Boy or something. But hey, it's still a new 2D Zelda game, and those are always fun! Where, you know, you explore an open action-adventure world challenging dungeons and bosses to save the kingdom. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. Also, this game's disgustingly broken and pisses and Link to the Past mouth until end credits. Yeah, well, there's that too. Okay, you gotta admit, this looks pretty good for a 2D Zelda. The 3D effect is also pretty cool for, 
whoever actually uses that feature. The game was actually designed to look so much like Link to the Past that they actually had to weirdly distort all of the graphics to face up at the camera in order to get the same top-down look that the original pulled off in sprite form. Thing is, this doesn't actually make any sense if you look at it from the side, where you can see just how janky the game world really is for the sake of this illusion. I think that's actually really neat. It's got some pretty nice designs all around, too. Link and Zelda both have these modern versions of their original artwork, and I really like that. Zelda in particular still uses this game's design for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, by the way. The 2D painting effects actually look really cool and stylized. Shame they kind of conflict with the art style, reflecting the DS Wind Waker spin-off sequel games and not the new established style, but chalk it up to the development hell that this game went through, I guess. You know what, I take it back. Everything looks great except Yuga, who looks freaking stupid. Am I allowed to complain about how they butchered the story yet? It is not that bad. Hold on. Alright, fire away, sourpuss. Alright, so in the same vein of this game not knowing what it wants to be, it doesn't even understand what story to tell, as in it's half an awkward retelling of Link to the Past and half an entirely new thing. Yeah, apparently as far as Nintendo's concerned, this is not a remake or retelling of Link to the Past in any way. It's just coincidental to the point of becoming an insensitive parody where they were probably just naming it Nostalgia. And this baloney was actually intended to fit inside Nintendo's laughably bad official timeline, which you can hear all about in our episode discussing the timeline travesty shameless plug. I want to explain the story, but I don't want to retread all the Link to the Past stuff we already went over. You can also just go watch our Link to the Past review to hear exactly what this game's catastrophically ruining shameless plug. Okay, so assuming you know Link to the Past already, basically swap out Aghanim with Yuga, a goofy dreadlocks clown whose entire personality boils down to obsessing over the new painting gimmick, and you already know half the story. And the rest is more like an addendum and less like new material, outside of the game's one real change coming in the form of changing the name of the Dark World to <laughs> low rule. We now have high rule and low rule. <laughs> Aside from that being the most painfully corny thing I think I've ever heard in my entire life, this adds absolutely nothing to the plot aside from some added convolution of low rule counterpart characters to Hyruleans, namely Zelda and her counterpart, Hilda. <laughs> It really is just an unabashedly bootleg dark world. And if you're wondering about Link's counterpart from Low Rule, don't, because there's only one character in the entire freaking game besides Yuga who it could possibly be. So of course it's Ravio, the item monopolizing bunny scam artist. <laughs> Hey, it's kind of neat that Link's Dark World, er, Low Rule counterpart takes the form of a bunny just like Link did in Link to the Past. But that's just it. References and pandering mean nothing when the story itself doesn't know what it wants to be. Is it a retelling or a sequel? <laughs> it's neither! Nintendo even said as much! What even is this game? <laughs> Trash! Okay, I hate to say this because most of the Link to the Past arrangements are wonderful, but these new tracks stink worse than Hamster's trash can right now. <sighs> Sorry, low rule was too much. It also doesn't help that 90% of the soundtrack is a bunch of shamelessly recycled melodies from past Zelda games, even the 3D ones like Ocarina of Time. It felt weird when Minish Cap did it, and it's equally uncomfortable here too. Though I admittedly might be the only person alive who thinks this way. Yoga, 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 yoga. Come on, we can't throw out the entire soundtrack. Just because of one bad egg. I take it back, the soundtrack sucks. Uh, I implore you to just play Link to the Past instead. Never assume that just because a game is newer or even considered to be a remake, that does not mean it will be better. You remember Super Mario 64 DS? It's a faithful remake of the N64 classic, but it added a ton of new content and ideas, like swapping characters with different abilities. However, unlike Link Between Worlds, these additions fit perfectly into the game considering they were all either based on or closely inspired by existing content in the original. Yeah, but here the new stuff just gets in the way of the source material, or outright defeats its purpose. At least the next time Nintendo decided to remake a 2D Zelda game, they'd actually do it and not just give us another half-baked sham like this one. Unfortunately, they haven't given us a truly original 2D Zelda game since 2009. I don't think this qualified as selling it. A fan actually sent me this game to play, knowing how much I loved Link to the Past, and I still feel cheated. The positive gamer in me actually enjoyed The Legend of Zelda a Link Between Worlds a lot more than you would think with this video, with a 6 out of 10. You gotta keep in mind that aside from all that garbage packed into this game, the rest is still a high quality 2D Zelda game, and I think that's at least worth an above average score, 
even if it's just barely accomplishing it. The critical gamer in me cannot forgive this pitiful excuse of a Zelda game for making such horrendous crimes against game design with a 3 out of 10 proving that Nintendo has absolutely no idea why Link to the Past was so good to begin with, or how to even begin to replicate its charm or success. So what do you think? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds in the comments below. But if you think this means that 2D Zelda games aren't worth making anymore, then you're just playing with yourself. I actually put a poll up on Twitter asking you guys what you wanted me to review for the next Zelda game. I had like Wind Waker, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, but no, you picked this game. Like, do you know that I, I, I hate this game? I actually kind of hate this game, but it's not bad. It really isn't that bad, but I kind of hate this game. You know, you're probably right though, because clearly I'm going back and forth, which kind of makes better fodder for episodes like this, but either way. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more, and use the links in the description to nominate your own episode. And thank you to all of our Patreon members, Aspen, Arrow, Sid Genio, and Lura.